Okay, so I'll just draw a generic right triangle. The hypotenuse is H. It has a 37 degree angle. It really doesn't matter which angle is the 37 degree angle. Um, it's just obviously not the one across from the 8 because the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Um, according to my picture, it would be more accurate for this 37 degrees to be down here on the bottom. The instructions say find the measure of the other angle and the lengths of the other two sides, round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, um, so obviously we are not given a lot of information here. However, um, because it is a right triangle, it is very easy to solve for that third angle. How do we find the third angle there? 90 minus the 37, okay? Or if you want to look at it as the whole triangle, the whole triangle is 180 degrees. We know we have a 90 degree angle. We know we have a 37 degree angle. We're left with 53. You can just, you can kind of skip a little bit of a step by doing 90 minus because 180 minus 90 is 90, okay? So we have our two angles. We gotta figure out those other two sides. It's easy when we've got the Pythagorean theorem, okay? But to do the Pythagorean theorem, we have to have two sides. We only have one side here, okay? This is where trig is going to come into play. All right, so um, we can use any of our ratios. Well, we can't use any of our ratios. Let me rephrase that. Um, we can use sine or we can use cosine. Now, why can't we use tangent in this case? Right, we don't have the opposite or the adjacent. We have the hypotenuse. Eight is our hypotenuse. So that's why we can use either sine or cosine. It'll just depend on which one we used that'll tell us um, whether we found the opposite or the hypotenuse now, or the opposite or the adjacent. I tend to favor using sine first. I always try and use the given information as much as possible, even though I am 99.9% .9 confident that the other angle is 53 degrees, just in case I made some kind of crazy error in calculating that. I'm going to use the given information. So the sine of the 37 degree angle is equal to the opposite. I don't care what variable you use. I'm going to use um, B, okay, because as an O looks like a zero. A typically stands for adjacent, so I'm going to use B over the hypotenuse, which is H. Okay, we just solved this type of equation in the warm up. We need to multiply both sides by eight. Now, when you go to type this into your calculator, first thing you got to check is you need to go to your mode and make sure that you are in degree mode. Okay, make sure you're in degree mode. Anytime the calculator gets reset, that changes back to radians. So anytime you're doing these problems, you need to make sure you're in degree mode because the angle right there is in degrees. If we left it in radian mode, then the calculator would interpret 37 as 37 radians, which, based on our experience from last week, radians are very different from degrees. So 8 sine of 37 tells us that the opposite side, and we're supposed to round to the nearest hundredth, so 4.81 is approximately this opposite side right here. Now, at this point, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side, or we could use cosine to find the third side. Um, personally, I kind of favor using the trig just because it's not as much to type in, but if you're more comfortable with the Pythagorean theorem, that is fine as well. So the cosine of 37 degrees is equal to the adjacent, what we're trying to find, over the hypotenuse, which is 8. It's going to be the exact same process in our calculators, except we're using cosine instead of sine. 8 cosine to 37, and that tells us that the adjacent side is 6.39 approximately. Now, anytime you're solving these right triangles, uh, do y'all remember that there's a property about triangles? and their angles compared to their side lengths, okay? The smallest angle is directly across from the smallest side length, or vice versa, if you want to look at it, it's the smallest side and across from the smallest angle. Um, the one in the middle, of course, must be the side length in the middle, and then your hypotenuse is always your longest side.
side. So that's a quick little check to make sure that you didn't type something in wrong or you're not in the wrong mode or something like that. All right, so this should be somewhat, or y'all have done stuff like this before, correct? Somewhat familiar? Okay. Um, let's look at a uh, application problem here. Again, don't write down all the words, okay? Just write down the, um, just draw the picture. The problem says from a point that is 340 feet away from the base of the Peachtree Center Plaza in Atlanta, Georgia. So that's talking about this distance right here. We're going to assume uh, that that is perfectly level ground. I know in the real world it's not, but let's just assume. Uh, now, we are definitely going to assume that this building forms a right angle with the ground. That's got to be true, or we got a problem. We got a leaning tower of Pisa. Um, it says the angle of elevation to the top of the building. Okay, now, angle of elevation. Angle of elevation refers to the angle that is created with the horizontal. And in this case, the horizontal would be the ground. Okay, angle of elevation is always formed with the horizontal. Find the height of the building to the nearest foot. So we want to know H in this scenario of this triangle, which trig ratio are we going to use? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Hmm. Which side do we have in relationship to this angle? The adjacent, which side are we looking for? The opposite. We don't care about the hypotenuse. I know I labeled it as H. I labeled it as H because it's height. Sorry if that was confusing. Um, but we are going to use tangent here. Tangent of our angle, 65 degrees, is equal to the opposite. That's what we don't know. Over the adjacent, 340. Okay, same scenario here, very straightforward. All we need to do is multiply by the 340. And we get that it is 729 point, oh, did it say to the nearest foot? Yeah, to the nearest foot. So approximately 729 feet. Anytime you're doing an application problem, please do me a favor, include the units, okay? Pay attention to what the units are. Uh, you should always include those in your problem. Okay, I want to make sure I'm getting something. Okay, uh, let's look at one more example here. We are told a right triangle has a hypotenuse of 13 and it has a leg of 5. Find the length of the other leg and the measure of the other two angles. So the hypotenuse is 13. One of the legs is 5. Now this was the special triangle that I just talked about, a 5, 12, 13. I know the hypotenuse is 13. I know a leg is 5. So I know that the other leg is 12. Let me do that in a different color since we found that piece of information. Now, if you're not comfortable with... Um, relying upon that, then you can certainly do your Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared minus leg squared equals the other leg squared. So take the square root of that and you get 12. Okay, um, But you can use that special property there. Now, you're used to doing that. Now we got to find the angles. Okay, Now we got to find the angles. For whatever reason, I always start by finding the angle down on the bottom. There's nothing special about that. That's just kind of the, the way I always do it. So again, I try and use the given information as much as possible just in case I messed up in my calculations. So the given information that I have in relation to this angle that I'm trying to find is I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to use sine. I don't know the angle this time. That's equal to the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse is 5 over 13. Now, to find an angle, we have to use the inverse trig function. 
Okay, we have to use the inverse trig function. Now, you don't necessarily have to write it out like this every time, but I'm just showing you why. Okay, inverse functions undo each other. I don't know if you've really heard much about inverse functions up to this point. If you haven't, it's no big deal. Just believe me um, that they undo each other. So that says the angle is equal to the inverse sign is on your calculator. You press the second button and then the sign button. Okay, that'll bring up the inverse sign and then you type in the 5 over 13. Again, it's in degree mode, so the answer it gives us is degrees. Uh, I think it said round to the nearest tenth this time, so that's 22.6 degrees. And really, there's no point in doing the trig again uh, to find that third angle. I would just do 90 minus that number. Uh, it's really easy in your calculator. If you do 90 minus, you can do second negative, and it'll bring up the last answer. So 67.4 degrees is the third angle. Okay, so uh, 